but church, one more time, use those car horns and welcome on his very last day carrying this title, technically, uh, our youth leader, Johnny Estes, to bring the word this morning. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. About 100% sure how uh, I'm supposed to follow up that amazing worship. And on top of that, Star tells me this morning that she's hungry and I better bring it. So I guess I better bring it this morning, otherwise she may run me over with her car. I'm not sure. So how's everybody doing this morning? Obviously ready to have a good word, huh? That's good. All right, so if you... Let me just say this, if you agree with what I say and you want to say amen, just honk that horn. Alright, this is awesome. Well, today is graduation Sunday. God closed my notebook. Maybe he doesn't want me to use my notes. Today is graduation Sunday, a Sunday in which we honor those that have completed high school. But a funny thing about this, these graduates didn't complete high school. They're going to be the first class ever that didn't complete high school but yet gets a diploma. How weird is that? When I think about graduation, I can't think about, I got well, I have to think about the times that I've graduated myself, you know, a couple of times. Uh, the first one being way back in 1983, and Joe's not out here, but that was before Joe was even born. Graduated kindergarten. Marshall Elementary School, if you graduate, if you left Marshall Elementary School, honk your horn. All right, cool, so I got some fellow classmates there. That was the first time I wore the cap and gown. I've got a little Polaroid picture of it to prove it. You know, Joe this time last year talked about going to a, a kindergarten graduation and how he'd never really been a part of something like that before. But I've got the picture to prove it. It happened even before Joe was born. Second time graduating was 1995. Yes, I'm dating myself a little bit there if you do the math. Marshall County High School class of 1995. If you graduated MCHS, give us a home, give me a horn honk. All right. So back in 1995, those of you that uh, were around at that time, you may recognize some of this. Uh, some of the top songs of 1995 was were Gangsta's Paradise by Coolio, Water, <laughs> Waterfalls by TLC, I Like It, I Love It by Tim McGraw, Any Man of Mine by Shania Twain, and Kiss from a Rose by Seal. Hey, had we been able to do this inside, I probably would have asked Mike to cue some of this stuff up and we would have played it, but you know. You, you do what you can with the hand you're dealt, right? Uh, some of the top movies of 1995, the original Toy Story, you know, Buzz Lightyear, To Infinity and Beyond. Uh, I didn't realize this when I was looking it up, but Apollo 13, Houston, we have a problem. Braveheart, Crimson Tide, and Clueless. Some of the top news stories of 1995, and I didn't realize this either because I was too busy being a high school senior, but uh, uh, the Oklahoma City bombing, the Million Man March in Washington, D.C., and the most famous probably, O.J. Simpson found not guilty. If the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. So that's, that's all I'm going to say about me because we've got other people we're going to recognize here. When I first began working on this message in late February after Joe approached me, when Laura and I first uh, went to him to let him know that we were stepping down out of youth, this message was starting off very different. But then, uh, as we all know, something happened that, in, that kind of intruded all that we have, and that was COVID-19. For graduates not just here in Marshall County, but all across America and the world, the last few months of their senior year, kindergarten, sixth grade, tech school, or beauty school was difficult to say the least. 
For some, the rest of the year, their year was abruptly canceled very early on. For others, it was a waiting game to see what was going to happen and if they would get to finish out the journey they began so long ago. Proms, graduation, sports, all canceled or rescheduled. All the typical things that a senior preparing to graduate would do was lost. A part of their life that comes with so many memories taken away. They have faced so much adversity, sadness and fear over the last few months. My hope is that part of this day will give back to you in some way a small part of the things you may have missed or lost. Before I go any further though, I, want to, I, I meant to do this straight out of the gate and I forgot. But can we give a little appreciation to our pastor? He, uh, he's been dealing with this mess for the last eight, nine, ten weeks. Something like that. He's been leading worship along with his wife Holly and Chris Burnett. You know, they, he's been giving us words every Sunday. Except for, except for May. He took a little time off in May. Between Kathy and... Hello. There it is. All right, sorry. But let's, thank, let's just thank Joe whenever we see him. We can come back next week. And, you know, make sure he knows that he's appreciated and well-loved. So we've been in this message series titled Everyday Heroes. And before I get going into the rest of my stuff here, I'd also like to take just a moment to give a heartfelt thank you to all of those essential employees that have been on the front lines during all of this. Many, many probably sitting here have been in the front lines and what would be considered essential employees. We've got restaurant workers, we've got fast food workers having to deal with us complainers as we come through the drive-thru on that. Uh, got Mike Stutzman, who's in my line of work, potato chip work. You know, he's in there stocking shelves and this and that, making sure you got everybody's got their favorite kind of chip that they can find when they need it. And to medical personnel and so many others that I probably left out, thank you for all that you do. So back, so like I said, we've been in this message series titled Everyday Heroes. In week one, Pastor Joe defined what a hero is for us according to the dictionary. A person who is admired, admired or idealized for courage, outstanding achievement, or noble qualities. He spoke about how these are the type of people we are drawn to, want to follow, and we want to be like and look up to. We talked about the hero that Noah was in Genesis 6 and how he was obedient. Week two, Pastor Joe spoke about Peter and his origin story and how he immediately left everything and followed Jesus and was obedient to God. Week three, Pastor Joe brought us a message titled, Never Underestimate the Underdog and the Giants We Face Through 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 17 and the story of David and Goliath. They're not here today, I don't think, but uh, week four, Mother's Day, uh, congratulations go out to Kathy and Joe McCullough on the news of becoming grandparents. Kathy spoke to us about how wearing a mask seems like we are hiding behind it and how most women put on a mask to hide many things. She spoke to us about how the world has been changed because of one little virus. She also spoke to how the world changed for Mary, the mother of Jesus, with the visit of an angel and the things she had to endure. Week 5, Pastor Joe spoke to us about Jesus. I think he was a little pumped up on that message. I'm not sure why. He told us how he is our redeemer, our hero, victor, hope, champion, and savior, and how he is our example to follow for true sacrificial living and real generosity. And then last week for Memorial Day, Pastor Gary brought us a word from Proverbs 3, 1 through 6, and spoke about our choices and our spiritual path. He showed us how bad choices can affect that path and used David and Judas as examples. He asked the question, how do we choose the right path? He answered with trusting in the Lord, having faith, and following God's word all the time and with our whole hearts. So that brings us to today. The message I have for you is about a group of graduates that face challenges, adversity, ridicule, and even death, among many other things. This group of graduates was taught by a special teacher 
And all the teacher had to say were three simple words. Come, follow me. Are you looking for my water there? If not for this group of graduates, it's possible we wouldn't even be here today. We come to a church building, or in more recent cases, watch a live stream church service, or today have a wonderful drive-in service with beautiful weather. A little windy, knocking over our camera a few times, but it's beautiful weather, not the case. We do that so we can learn more about God and who our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was and is. If not for this group of men that had their own graduation day, the possibility of me or anyone else standing up here on any given Sunday morning to tell you, tell you about what Jesus did for us quite possibly would not be taking place. Jesus spent three years in ministry, performing miracles and teaching among many other things. But if it weren't for the struggles and sacrifices that took place over the next 30 years from this group of graduates to spread the gospel, the chances of, of us being here are near zero, and that was almost the case. If you haven't figured out who I'm talking about yet, I'm talking about the disciples. If you would, pray with me. Lord God, thank you for this gorgeous day you've given us. Thank you for this, the people that are here, for the people that will you know, hopefully see this or hear it later on. Lord, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for just giving me the opportunity to stand in front of people and to tell them about, you know, something amazing, I hope. So, thank you for all that, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So, what does it take to be an everyday hero? My personal opinion, to be an everyday hero, you first have to be an everyday person. And that's exactly what these disciples were, everyday people like you and I. At least four and possibly up to seven or eight of the disciples were fishermen living their everyday lives, mainly around the Sea of Galilee. Throw into the mix a tax collector and some tradesmen and you have yourself a group of everyday people on a path to become everyday heroes. But before they would become heroes, they were actually cowards living in fear. How can I call the coward disciples cowards? I'll explain that here in a minute. So if you would, think about this. For three years, these disciples have been following Jesus, have been living with Him, talking with Him, breaking bread with Him, doing everything they know with Him. But yet, they still didn't understand what was going on. They were, they were bump-fuzzled, if you will. Jesus had been teaching them, but He had also been warning them of His demise. But they did not understand what He was trying to tell them. In Mark 9, 30-32, this is what it says. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were. That was because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, The Son of Man is going to be handed over to men. They will kill him. After three days he will rise from the dead. But they didn't understand what he meant, and they were afraid to ask him. So the Bible says this was the second time that Jesus had predicted his death. So the disciples weren't listening the first time, so he had to do it again. Have you? Let me ask this: Have you ever been in a learning environment and something came up that you didn't understand, but you didn't ask about it out of fear? I know I have. Fear of being made to feel like you're stupid. Fear of being made to feel like you may not belong. And I think that's where the disciples were right here. They felt like they should know what Jesus was telling them, so out of fear, they didn't ask any questions. You only get ahead in life by asking questions when you don't understand the problem. In Matthew 26, verse 31, after they had finished their Passover meal and were headed to the Mount of Olives, Jesus had more to tell his disciples. Jesus told them, this very night you will all turn away because of me. It is written that the Lord said, I will strike the shepherd down, that the sheep of the flock will be scattered. That's a prophecy from Ze Zechariah 13, 7. The disciples' response in verse 35 was, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. It is not long after this that we find Judas and the crowd coming to arrest Jesus. It is here in Matthew 26, 56 and in Mark 14, 50 
that the prophecy is, prophecy is fulfilled and the disciples were proven to be cowards, like I said earlier. Then everyone left him and ran away. It's at this point that the here that I was talking about earlier almost didn't happen. The disciples had scattered because their teacher was being arrested. They were starting to understand all that he had been trying to tell them about his death and they were afraid of what was going to happen to them. Even three days later, when Jesus got up and walked out of the tomb he had been laying in, the disciples were still cowering in fear of the Jewish leaders. Uh, in John chapter 20, verse 19, on the evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were together. They had locked the doors behind because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. This is something that kind of popped in here for me on Friday. Can we all agree that we're feeling like the disciples right now? Locked away in fear, not sure what's going to happen next, what the next steps are going to be? But let me tell you, fear, fear is, the only thing we're supposed to fear is God Himself. Proverbs 19.23 says, Fear of the Lord leads to life bringing security and protection from harm. To me, that says if, you, if, you're, if you've got fear of the Lord and you know that you're living the way you're supposed to be doing, He's going to protect you from whatever issues you may have. Sorry I had to go off on that little rant there for a second. Back to the topic now. But in part B of verse 19 and in verse 20, something happened for the disciples. Jesus showed up. John, John verse 20, I'm sorry, John 20, verse 19, B and 20. Jesus came in and stood among them. He said, may peace be with you. Then he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were very happy when they saw the Lord. Because when Jesus shows up to show you that he's alive and that he is real, you have no choice but to believe. This was the turning point for the disciples. Jesus shows up and says to them, May peace be with you, and it was. If you keep reading in John, the disciples are no longer locked away in fear. They have gone back to their fishing boats and have begun to get back to what they once knew. I hope for us, that's what we're going to start experiencing next week. At least from a church perspective anyway. Sorry, my papers keep blowing. Uh... Over the next 40 days, Jesus, Jesus continues to appear to his disciples, and that leads us into the book of Acts and the main scripture that I have for you today, and it's Acts 1, verse 9. After Jesus said this, he was taken up to heaven. The apostles watched until a cloud hid him from their sight. This little phrase is what I got back in late January, early February, somewhere in there, that built this whole message. The day Jesus ascended to heaven was the disciples' graduation day. It was the day they were no longer called disciples, but had graduated to apostles. What's the difference? A disciple is defined as either a student or a follower, and an apostle is defined as a leader or a teacher. So quite literally, it's the day the student became the teacher. And what makes this even funnier is I didn't even realize this was Pentecost until this morning. So this message really, it, it flows with everything. It's, it kind of blew me away when I realized that. In Acts 1-9, it, begin, it begins with after Jesus said this. So what was it Jesus said to his disciples before leaving the earth and taking his place in heaven? Let's back up a few verses to Acts, Acts 1, 4 through 5 and 8. Verse 4, one day Jesus was eating with them. He gave them a command, do not leave Jerusalem, he said. Wait for the gift my father promised. You have heard me talk about it. Verse 5, John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Verse 8, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and all and Samaria. And you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. To understand the plan God has for you, you have to be obedient and listen to what He is telling you. 
Jesus told the disciples, do not leave Jerusalem and wait for the gift my Father promised. He was very, very firm in that. I'm thinking he didn't want them running away again. Just me. This time they were obedient and understood what Jesus was telling them. And it wasn't much later that the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them. If you take a look at Acts 4, 31 and 30, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were bold when they spoke God's word. Verse 33, with great power, the apostles continued their teaching. They were telling people that the Lord Jesus had risen from the dead and God's grace was working powerfully in all of them. Not only did they graduate from disciples to apostles, they also graduated from fear to boldness. That was, it, yeah. This was a new beginning for the apostles. They were no longer living in fear of what was to come or what would happen to them. They were bold in what they were doing. Over the course of the next 30 years, <coughs> excuse me, they would face challenges and roadblocks as they were taking the gospel from Jul Jerusalem to Judea, then on to Samaria. From there, as they were converting new believers to Christianity, this tiny new book belief began to spread all across the world. They had to cross long bridges, traverse deep ditches, and endured many hardships along the way. They had to figure out their approach to this new belief. They had to figure out what kind of lifestyle they were going to live, the message they were going to be sending, and the methods in which they would be doing it. They had to figure out how to plant churches in the new areas of the world they were going to. The leadership of those churches and the pastoral care that would need to be given to new believers. Last but not least, they had to get their priorities in order to make this new belief and what they were spreading all around the world work. It was these graduates, graduates, sorry, words are difficult this morning. It, is these, it was these graduates that brought us here. And I've been talking about here a little bit. But where is here? Is it inside the walls of the church? No, we haven't been inside the walls of the church for weeks. Is it outside the walls of the church? That's our mission field. That's where we're supposed to be doing our work. Spreading the good news of Jesus to the rest of the world. The here I'm talking about is in our hearts. Because it was the apostles that witnessed what Jesus was all about in person. The reason we even have Jesus living within us is because these graduates didn't give up. It is through their hard work and sacrifices we have faith and a belief that there is someone out there that leaves the 99 to find the one. Because of what they did, we know that there was someone willing to forgive us our sins and willingly died for us nailed on a cross. Because of them, we are here. Romans, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, Say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead then you will be saved. With your heart you believe and are made right with God. With your mouth you say what you believe and so you are saved. At this time I want to get uh, my lovely wife Laura, wherever she is, to get our uh, high school graduates ready. And for those graduates that are in their cars, if you would, make your way up to the porch. And while they're off doing that, I've got uh, a few other graduates now I would like to recognize and mention and make sure that they are included in this as well. Uh, so as they're making their way, a few weeks ago I asked Lisa if she would give me a list of those names that are graduating kindergarten because as I said earlier graduating kindergarten is a big deal, right? Yes. And those graduating elementary school and headed to middle school. So, if you're here today, just please stay in your car, but if I mention your name, give a horn honk, all right? Uh, so, following are the kindergarten graduates for 2020. Liam Chambers. Levi Hernandez. Liam Prest, is that right? Remington Upton. Zachary Tosh. Dagny Truman, Libby Truman, all right, then, sorry, when did 
is not my friend today, guys. I'm sorry. For those that are in elementary school, heading to middle school, and not only that, they will be graduating from our extreme kids and moving into the Epic Student Ministries as well. Caden Bennett, <laughs> Elisha Boyd, <laughs> Catherine Burrow, yeah. Autumn Blackall, <laughs> Cadence Chambers, yeah. Ella Murphy, yeah. Lucas Smith, yeah. and Josie Tate. Also handed to me this morning, we have a college, uh, someone graduating college this year as well from the University of Tennessee. Woo! Yeah. Zach Smith. All right. If they are ready over there. get through this without completely losing it. This class, our youth we've always called our kids and I truly feel like they are our kids. When we started in youth, we were started in junior youth. That happens to be this class. So this class is a little bit extra special to us. We've been through a lot of highs and a lot of lows with them not be any prouder of these young young adults um, we have a couple of them who could not be here today um, that we're gonna recognize also one of them is Ashley Clanton she is a graduate of Lawrenceburg High School and she is going to be going to college for criminal justice <laughs> Next, we have Brittany Clanton. <laughs> Guys, sometimes these kids may not get this walk. This is their walk. Please let show them the love. <laughs> Brittany is also a graduate of Lawrenceburg High School. She will be going to National Guard Basic in August. And then she'll be able to come back and go to college for physical therapy. Tyler Dalton. has come an incredibly long way if y'all knew him when we first start, got him. He is a graduate of Marshall County High School. He actually early graduated in December, so he actually got to have that walk. He will be going into law enforcement, not sure exactly what yet, but law enforcement. So we want to make sure, we make sure that we say extra prayers over this young man. Skylar Marsh. Skylar also is a graduate of Marsh County High School. She's also my mini-me. 
for, in my phone, I don't label a lot of people in nicknames, but she got a mini me uh, label. She is going to be going to MTSU and majoring in English to be a teacher and put up with all us kids. Gabe. Gabe Stump. I have known him since he was little. <laughs> I have pictures of him and Cameron and Hunter Adams when I think they were about kindergarten. So Gabe has been around here a long time. He is a graduate of Cornersville High School and will be going to TCAT in Pulaski and getting his certificate in welding. These are all my kids, but one of them has happened to live at my house, it seems like, for the past four or five years. And it's not even my son. By blood. Devin Massengill. Devin, the first time I met him was not even in person. I got a message saying, hey, I'm Devin, I'm your son's friend, do you wanna be friends? On Instagram, and I'm like, who is this? <laughs> Somehow he ended up in my house, living in my house half the time, and I'm okay with that. He goes on vacation with us, well, he just hangs around. This is my other son, as I get, I say to a lot of people, he is a graduate of Cornersville High School, We'll be going to Pellissippi State for a couple years and then going to UT and majoring in nursing. I was doing good. This last one that we actually have one more before him. Tana Reese. Sorry, I'm gonna hold you. Tanner couldn't be here. He is a graduate of Cornersville High School. He'll be going to UT Martin and majoring in agricultural business. This one I've kind of known his whole life. Literally. It is our son. John Cameron Estes. He's a graduate of Cornersville High School. He will be going to Maryville University, uh, college, I'm sorry, college in Maryville, Tennessee. Uh, majoring in business, and he is going to continue his football career while at Maryville. <laughs> there are so many more that we could recognize, but guys, this is our small village that y'all have helped raise. Whether you are biologically a parent or just a member of this church, this is our young tribe that we will be sending out and a lot of them will be leaving this area and as a mom i i am struggling i have two who have actually graduated high school and their tassels are already over but you know what for my other ones you've graduated this sunday move them tassels finish out here I've got a few little things and then we'll be done and we can go on and enjoy the rest of this beautiful day to the graduating class of 2020 whatever it is you're graduating from <sighs> thanks honey this has been a less than desirable past few months full of frustration waiting and just trying to understand why things are happening the way they are your journey is not so different than that of the disciples Things that you have known for so long suddenly came to an end when you thought you had more time. 
The fear of the unknown looming in the distance and not knowing what was coming next. What comes next is this. Jesus knocks on the door to show you his hands and his side and to tell you, may peace be with you. In this journey that we call life. Think of these last few months like this. This has been your 40 days between death and ascension. It is now your time to go set the world on fire. A few words of wisdom to leave you with, and I cannot take credit with any of these except for the first one, because I stole them all. Uh, first of all, don't spit in the wind's face because the wind spits back. The difference between school and life, in school you're taught a lesson and then, then given a test. In life, you're given a test that teaches you a lesson. Mm -hmm. Faith is seeing light in your heart when all your eyes see is darkness. Sometimes when things are falling apart, they may actually be falling into place. Hate no one, no matter how much they've wronged you. Live humbly, no matter how wealthy you become. Think positively, no matter how hard life gets. Give much, even if you have been given little. Forgive all, especially yourself, and never stop praying for the best for everyone. Every time, every time you are tempted to react in the same old way, ask yourself if you want to be a prisoner of the past or a pioneer of the future. Some of the best days of your life haven't happened yet. And finally, to quote the band, Sidewalk Prophets, from their song, the words I would say, Be strong in the Lord. Never give up hope. You're going to do great things. Ah, I already know. God's got His hand on you, so don't live life in fear. Forgive and forget, but don't forget why you're here. Take your time and pray. Thank God for each day, and His love will find a way. Barely got through that. Alright, so let's pray and close out this day, and I don't know if Pastor Joe has anything else he wants to say or anything, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and pray. So Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for this wonderful weather, and most importantly, thank you for the opportunity to praise these graduates that we have that are going out on their own to make a new beginning. May they understand and follow in your path and follow the guided footsteps you've placed in front of them. Thank you for all that you do, Lord, and it's in Jesus' name that I pray this. Amen.